Hi, this is Doug Standard with the Leaders Institute again. We're going to do a quick little session on personality temperaments. It's one of the things that, that we get a lot of questions about. The reason why is because there's a ton of companies out there that will t teach you how to learn about personality temperaments. There's Myers-Briggs and there's DISC profiles and there's all kinds of different versions of it. And I'll, I'll kind of give you a quick little history about how I got involved. I started studying personality temperaments probably 15, 20 years ago when I first read my first book on on how to study people's personalities and that kind of thing. And a lot of the a lot of the the modern versions of personality temperaments are complicated and so challenging that it's kind of hard to use. And so when we started teaching this in our in our leadership classes and, and especially in our team building, we do half day sessions on team building where we keep, teach people how to work together better by understanding the personalities of not only themselves but other people. And one of the big challenges I found, especially with the, the Myers Briggs and the DISC profiles, specifically the Myers Briggs though, is that it's so complicated. It takes you you know weeks for you to. It takes you a long time number one to take the test to figure out what your personality is, and then you have to wait for the results to come back, and then you're the only one that gets it. You and maybe your boss are the only people that get it. You never actually understand what other people's results were, right? And that's one of the biggest challenges. And so. When we started teaching this, in, especially in half-day team building sessions, we had to figure out a quick, easy way for you to determine not only what your own personality is and what your own strengths and weaknesses are, but also the people around you so you can communicate better with them. And so what I'm going to lead you through over the next 10 or 15 minutes is, is a session on how to determine what your own strengths and weaknesses are, how to deal with people, why you know the people that really frustrate you really frustrate you, and how to deal with them more effectively. And we're going to do it based on, on personality temperaments. What, the way that I kind of designed this way back in you know a couple of, uh, probably about a decade or so ago was I had to go back all the way to Socrates. He was the guy that first introduced the study anyway of personality temperament. So this is about 2,500 years old. The modern versions have you know kind of manipulated that and made it really difficult to understand. And so what I did was I went back to the source and it became really really easy. So there's basically in order to determine what your own strengths and weaknesses are and what the people around you, what their strengths and weaknesses are, is you just have to ask yourself and, the, and those other people two specific questions, right? And in fact, the chart that, that you're going to see uh, show up on the screen here is actually going to have two lines. It'll have a, a horizontal line here and then a vertical line going up. That horizontal line is going to ask the, the first question, which is, are you more of a direct kind of person or more of an indirect kind of person, right? If you're far on the far extreme over here on the indirect side, uh, they're, they're, folks who are kind of indirect tend to be a little bit more cautious, tend to be a little bit more, um, they tend to be a little slower to make decisions because they don't want to make a mistake. Whereas the people who are on the direct side tend to be a little bit more spontaneous. They're fast to action. And a lot of times they don't mind, they don't like make, making mistakes, but they don't mind making a mistake because they learn from their mistakes and they, they make a correction and kind of move. So its speed is, is more important to them than a lot of times accuracy. So the more you are on the direct side, the faster you are to take action. The more you are on the indirect side, the slower you tend to be to kind of take action. So what I always ask people to do is to assess their own personal self on that, on that horizontal line. Are you more of an indirect person? Are you more of a cautious, you know, um, slower to action? Or are you more of a direct person, you know, more spontaneous? You know, let's kind of get things done fast. For me personally, I'm more on the direct side. I tend to be a, a ready, fire, aim kind of person. So shoot first and then kind of, you know, figure out where you're at and kind of make a, make a change along the way. So I'm probably about midway through to on, the, uh, on the direct side over here. Now on the vertical line, you, the, the people who are on the lower part of the vertical, vertical line are, tend to be more logical, number-oriented kind of people. The people who are at the top tend to be more people-oriented, tend to be more gut-feeling kind of people. So when you make decisions, do you make decisions based on the numbers or the statistics, the statistics or the evidence, the facts, the figures, or does it? Or do you make more? Uh, do you make your decisions based on? A reaction of other people. Do you are you more likely to take a survey and kind of see what other people think before you kind of take action, that kind of thing. So people who are more people oriented tend to be much better at dealing with people. They tend to be more intuitive. They tend to be have um, better. Uh, they tend to be better in tune with their kind of that 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 inner uh, voice that kind of directs them. Uh, the people who are more on the on the lower side down here tend to be more logical, number oriented, that kind of thing, right? So basically, if you, if you, me personally, I'm more of a logical oriented kind of person, so I'm kind of down here at the at the lower part, and so I tend to be a person who's direct and kind of logical. Uh, the 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 temperament that I fit into in this lower quadrant quadrant is what we call a driver type person, and each one of these quadrants, where by the way, wherever you're 
your two uh, points intersect, once you have the two dots, if you kind of just draw a line two from one to the other, it kind of tells you what your personality temperament or what your major personality temperament is. Now, one quick little piece of caution on determining your where you fall on this chart. A lot of times folks will kind of put where they train their self, themselves to be over you know, 5, 10, 15 years, especially if a person has kind of moved into a career, let's say somebody has, has become an attorney or an accountant or something like that, and so as a result of that career choice, they've had to force themselves to be more logical or detail-oriented, that kind of thing. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll move their, their dot you know, further down to the logical side, although that's not naturally where they fall. And so a good way to kind of determine what your natural temperament is, is to kind of think back where you were in high school maybe. You know, what, where would you have put your dot if you, when you were in high school? Not where you've trained yourself to be. By the way, those of us who, you know, kind of figure out how to get along with people, we tend to move our dots kind of closer to the center over time. But what we're looking for more is your, your natural spot, right? So let me go through the four quadrants, each one of the four quadrants, and kind of show you what each one of these are. So if you are on the indirect side and you're more of a people person, you're what we call an amiable kind of person. Amiables have a lot of great strengths. They are, they are uh, very, very good at building trust, building rapport with people. They're very good at, um, at uh, problem solving. They're also very good at dealing with people. They... Um, uh, the biggest challenge, really, that the, the amiable kind of person has is that they tend to be more self-critical. You know, so they, they tend to be harder on themselves than other people. In fact, they tend to like to get really, really good at something and, and, and then not change, basically, right? So they tend to be slower to change because what makes them successful is what has happened in the past. You know, they, they're training themselves to get really, really good at something. The biggest challenge that the that the um, uh, amiable will tend to have, as far as career-wise, is that because they they don't like to necessarily make mistakes. In fact, they don't really mind making mistakes. They just don't want other people to know that they made a mistake, right? So the worst thing that can happen to an amiable is to get called out on the carpet for something. So as a result, they tend to, you know, try to stick to the things that are safer. You know, things that they know. Uh, so um, the um, so as far as the the strengths of the of the amiable again. Build, they, they're, they're very good at building relationships, at building strong long-term relationships especially, very good at dealing with people, but tend to be a little self-critical of themselves. On the lower side down here, where they, uh, the, if you're indirect and you're more of a logical kind of person, you're what we call an analytical. Now, analyticals tend to be, uh, the stereotypical analytical anyway, it's kind of like the computer person or the accountant, you know. If you think about, you know, like Spock from Star Trek, you know, that's the, that's the logical, you know, totally logical kind of person. That's kind of the stereotypical analytical type person, very detail-oriented. Uh, the, 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 in fact, that's the real strength of the analytical, the details, the logic, the thoroughness, right? The biggest challenge that the analytical will have, though, is that they're not as energetic or enthusiastic about things and so they tend to sometimes have kind of paralysis by analysis they tend to analyze things way too long and as a result you know never kind of take action so the real strength is the details but a lot of times that's the real weakness of the of the analytical as well the driver the, the temperament like I am very goal oriented in fact the reason why we call this person the driver is because they get very we get very goal oriented we drive to get to that goal and then we have to go back later and kind of pick up the bodies, you know, put band-aids on all the, the, you know, we're kind of like bulls in the china shop a lot of times, you know, we're, we're going to get to where we want to go and then we have to kind of fix things along the way and go backwards. So because we're so goal-oriented, because we're so focused, a lot of times we, we tend to disregard the people side, especially the relationship side of, of getting to where we need to go. So basically, we're the exact opposite of the amiable. The amiable, again, is the real strength is the building trust and rapport. The driver, eh, not so much, right? Driver, very goal-oriented, very self-confident, right? The amiable, eh, not so much, right? So we tend to be the exact opposite of the temperament that's, that's opposite of us on the, on the chart. All right, the last temperament is what we call the expressive. Expressives tend to be very enthusiastic, fun, energetic, that kind of thing. Again, the exact opposite of the analytical down here. 
Uh, but the, the biggest weakness that the, the expressive has, though, is that, you know, whereas the analytical is very detail-oriented, very thorough, the expressive, mm, not so much, you know, very big picture kind of person. So both, by the way, are very creative, but in totally different ways, right? The expressive tends to be very creative in, in, a, in a big picture kind of thing, right? Whereas the, the um, analytical tends to be more creative. A lot of times they're, they're, you find people that are very musically inclined, artistic, tend to be kind of analytical as well. So basically, those are the four temperaments. Um, just to kind of give you a, a, an idea of famous people from each one of the temperaments. Famous people that would, a famous person that's amiable that would be like Oprah Winfrey. If you think about Oprah Winfrey, very, very famous. Very, you know, she was the queen of daytime television for the longest period of time. And the way that she did that was she created a two-way communication with people on the on on her show. Basically, she brought guests on every day, and she created that communication. She made people feel a part of the team, feel, feel a part of her. In fact. You know, the thing that she's most noted for is giving away a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so, you know, so very amiable kind of thing, right? Analyticals, very famous analyticals would be like Bill Gates, you know, the founder of, of, um, of uh, Microsoft. You know, so very detail-oriented, that kind of thing. A uh, very famous kind of driver type person would be like Patton, General Patton, you know. He was going to get to Berlin no matter what. If you watch the George C. Scott movie from, you know, back in the 70s or whenever it was made, you know, if you, it, it, that's, that's a very driver type attitude that, that Patton takes. He's going to get to Berlin first. He's going to beat Montgomery there no matter what it cost him. And it cost him his army a couple of times, right? So very, very driver. I mean, again, that's a stereotypical kind of driver. And then expressive, stereotypical kind of expressive, um, Robin Williams just passed away high energy uh, Jim Carrey you know high energy enthusiastic fun if you think of those types of personalities those are kind of the stereotypical kind of expressives um, we t the the cool thing about this particular study is that if you understand where you are on the chart it kind of tells you how you're best likely or most likely to communicate or the biggest challenges that you might have with some of the other temperaments right so since the, since the expressive and the analytical tend to be almost polar opposites of each other, they tend to work really well on a team, right? So they tend to make up for each other's deficiencies. In fact, if you think about the people that we tend to date, the people that we tend to get married to, we tend to pick people who are opposite. So if you've ever seen the, you know, the, the cheerleader, rah-rah, you know, good-looking, gorgeous kind of woman that's with the little computer nerd, <laughs> you're going to wonder, how in the world does that happen, really? Well, the personality tournaments kind of explain it. They're, they're, they're opposites. They make up for each other's deficiencies, right? So uh, the express, I mean, the, uh, the driver tends to be attracted to more of the amiable kind of person. Again, we make up for each other's deficiencies. On, in, a, in a company, when you get these four temperaments together on a team, they tend to work really, really well together. If you have too many of any one of these temperaments on a team, they, you tend to see more conflicts. Like for instance, uh, a lot of times a, 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 a driver type person might be a manager. Well, that driver type person will tend to hire people that are more amiable, right? Because the amiables will do what we want them to do. <laughs> and then, but the problem with that is that we lose a lot of the creativity and the drive and the focus. And so the, the, the driver leader is now the person who's doing most of the, of the stuff. You know? So they tend to get you know, kind of overwhelmed with the, with the and, and wonders, you know, why in the world won't these people do what I want them to do? You know, what, what, why won't they have some initiative? That kind of thing, right? So the driver will start to get more kind of frustrated because he or she has kind of surrounded himself with more angular kind of people, right? Well, that's what he wanted when he hired them, right? Um, but when you get all four of the temperaments together, they tend to work really, really well together. Like, for instance, if you have an overly, if a team is overly driver-ish, you know, you've got two, three, four drivers on a team, they're going to be competing for authority. They're going to be constantly fighting with each other. If you think about a, a kind of a typical sales team, right, that are, you, typically, you know, salespeople aren't really team-oriented, right? So you get a couple of driver-type type, um, people on a sales team, uh, well, they're going to be very competitive, and that's really what you, what a sales manager might be really looking for. But if you think of those people as being a team, it doesn't really work very well because they're they're constantly going at each other, that kind of thing. So again, when you're when you're choosing people on your on your team, you want to make sure that you're picking a variety of these personality temperaments, and you'll tend to do a whole lot better. Um, we're going to take a, a a quick break, at least on on the session here, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to how to kind of use this information in order to 
build confidence in the people around us. And in fact, it's really one of the most important parts of the most important aspects of personality temperaments and how to really grow confidence in people that are around us. And so we're gonna, and so we'll, we'll, we'll pick you up on the next video and kind of show you how to do that. So thank you very much.